Welcome everyone. My name is Susanna Maurer. I am the Publicity Director for Ambassador International. With me today, I have Verity A. Buchanan. And I am so excited about this author for many, many reasons. Um, but I'm going to let you like hear from her why I'm so excited about her. Verity, tell your our audience today three things about yourself. Hey guys, um, I am Verity A. Buchanan, author of the Kerristen series, the first two books of which are published with Ambassador International, um, as you heard. And um, three things about me. Okay, here goes. <laughs> I am the oldest of eight siblings, which uh, can lead to some very, uh, very useful kind of experience when I write about siblings in my books. Side note. Um, did you know that Shakespeare was also one of eight kids? I may have heard that, but I don't think it stuck in my brain. So and I, I learned that something new. <laughs> because I'm the oldest of eight, and I brought my sisters to Shakespeare's childhood home, and the tour guide made a quip about how no one has eight kids anymore, and we were like, actually, that would be us. What so, do you know? <laughs> you can just tell people that that's what you have in common with Shakespeare. There you go. Now that I've thing. interrupted you, what are your other two? Uh, okay, so um, let me see. Number two, I am a big fan of an author called Rosemary Sutcliffe, who is not a super well-known author, but she wrote a lot of historical fiction for um, kids and young adults, and um, her books were some of my favorites in school when I that would, when I had them for assigned reading. Um, Eagle of the Ninth was the first one I ever read oh, by her. Wow. And yeah, yep. have you yeah, read that it's, one? It's a yes. sunlight. Um, it's a big sunlight book. My mom has it on her. Oh, her home you got? Did shelf. you guys do? You guys did sunlight? My mom did with her younger kids, and I did okay. it in my senior cool. year. Cool. So yeah. 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 My mom to... did sunlight with us all the way from me when I was like and six. And that is why she down. writes books. So there you go, yeah. guys. Sunlight pitch. We're helping you out here. <laughs> uh, but yes, no, Sunlight makes total sense for why you're an author. That yes. Perfect. Awesome. Love that. Mm. And what's the third one? Oops, I love that. Okay. So let me see. That was that was two things. Oh, now I got to come up with the third one. The third one, I love collecting notebooks. That is my oh. jam. Oh, my goodness. Do you write in them or do you just, like, collect them? I wish I could say I always write in them, but I just, I, I just have a thing for collecting right. them. Sometimes I write in them, and sometimes they just sit and look pretty. <laughs> you know what, though? I, I feel like I really um, appreciate that. One of my children collects notebooks, but they're the same notebook, and then his sister scribbles in them. So I will try to get my children to move on from that, because I think that's a good goal, to collect notebooks that are not ruined by your siblings. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I put in our tagline that you are one of our youngest authors, and I was hoping that it didn't sound demeaning, but I just think it's so exciting to see people write and write good books because, you know, you can scribble on the page, but writing good books takes talent um, at such a young age. And Verity, when did you first start on the Journey's manuscript? It was September 2013. Uh, I was just 13 years old, um, and I had created the story a little while, a couple months beforehand with my sister, okay. and um, we, we would do things like where we would, we would just talk a story out together with the right. characters and just kind of create it as we went, and we were talking about it one evening, I was like, I should write this story, I could make a cool story out of this, and, and just went from there. And then you did, you did write yeah. the story. I think that's what I love so much is that you wrote the story. You didn't just like think it was a good idea and then push <laughs> it aside, but you wrote the story. Yeah. Um, what was like the hardest parts about writing the journey? Like what were the biggest difficulties you encountered in it? Definitely um, writing Fred's character properly. Okay. Because initially, um, I, I struggled. I, I was um, just starting to like solidify my own style as an author and I struggled with overwriting. Okay. I would overwrite emotions especially. So right. he felt very morbid and um, a little too introspective and gloomy for a while. Some of that teenage and age less, coming like, out there. <laughs> yeah and a little bit less like the um, 
strong character. I wanted him to be gentle and humble and very sensitive, but still strong. Oh, that's, I really like that. That is a really good point because I think people, writers either put way too much emotion into that and it just feels like you're reading someone's journal or they, <laughs> they don't describe any emotion. And it's like, he was sad. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I think that it's really cool that you identified that, especially as a teenager and worked through that and grew him and molded him as a character like that. Yeah. That's oddly fascinating. Now I need to go <laughs> look over Fred more. Yeah, it was actually interesting because I think it was Rosemary Sutcliffe that helped pull me out of that. I recognized what I, some stuff I admired in her writing, the way she handled emotions, and I was trying to imitate that in my own writing. Oh. So it really helped me um, nail down Fred accurately with his narration. Oh, that, so your advice would be probably read good books that yeah, you can read emulate good books, absolutely. as a writer, which is what every writer does writing teacher tells anyone <laughs> and there it is it's true yeah. so was Fred um harder to write than Sandy would you say yeah okay. especially at first again and Sandy was not in the original plan she was not going to be a point of view character okay when I added her that actually helped with Fred as well because we got to kind of see some of Fred's heroism from the outside Whereas before you had to see it all from the inside and that was a little bit hard to convey without sounding like a little bit too martyred, you know? Right. <laughs> I wish you could tell so many like screenwriters that this is what they need to do. <laughs> because I feel like you see that in movies all the time. You're just like, I need to see perspective other than this main character yeah. right now. Yeah. And that's why I love books because we have yeah. usually different characters and we can imagine it a bit more. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm really excited about this. Yeah. And I, I love you, working. I love working with multiple perspectives that, yeah, I think, I think that makes a book worth reading. And it, even if you don't like one person's perspective, you can't wait to get to the next person. Sure. And it drives yeah. the plot. Yeah. Um, I told you this earlier, but I want our audience to hear that, that when I was reading bits of the journey and the village, um, a couple months ago, it occurred to me that these were the stories that my siblings and I used to watch as movies when we were kids. They were clean, they were wholesome, but they were real. There was conflict, there was struggle. It wasn't just like la di da running down the path and daisies. But it's something that you want your, your children to read as teenagers and stuff. It's something you want people to read and want to give them. Um, and I really appreciated that you wrote that. Um, and now that I know that you learned you were trained in sunlight and read sunlight curriculum I think yeah. it makes a lot more sense because mm -hmm. I was just marveling over the fact that you wrote these stories that were what I wanted to show my children and mm -hmm. what I remember being raised on yeah I would definitely say I was sustained from a young age on a diet of excellent literature and so I was basically just putting that out in my own words right so again Read, read, read. <laughs> read, read, read. I feel like we have a little like plug for our books everywhere, which is good. What surprised you mo most in the course of writing the journey? So, um, while I was writing the journey, um, I would uh, I would surprise myself sometimes with what deep thoughts came out of my <laughs> came out of my pen or my pencil and I don't I don't want this to sound braggy at all like I never felt like it was me so much as my characters themselves just coming out with these things like maybe they were words. maybe they were truths that I had um just internalized and they were somewhere in my subconscious but my characters were the people drawing them out of me and articulating them in ways I'd never thought about before oh I love that that reminds me of a Joe March quote from I think it's the 1992 Little Woman movie where she says that she would write at night because the voices and stories would come alive in her head and I think for you it's like the truth and the principles and these characters would come alive um, through your pen which is yeah. which is the mark of a good book I think if this story is writing itself so I think a story yeah a story should definitely have some kind of life to it yes um, yes with that being said, after you finished the journey, 
was it hard to start the village? Did you feel like you were unwrapping something you just wrapped up? Um, well, the thing about the village, the thing about the whole Kariston series is um, since my sister and I were creating these stories and then I was like writing them in um, a more writerly format rather than just uh, the games <laughs> we played together, um, we did those in very quick succession. And I would start one almost as soon as we had finished our um, talk play of it. Okay. <sighs> So I was writing all four books simultaneously. Okay. And it was a little bit of a challenge going from the journey to the village, which was in its which was in a much more um early stage of my writing and going back and seeing what I needed to fix and alter. Um it was a fun challenge though. I enjoyed um revisiting it. And the village was complex because of how many characters it has compared to the journey as well. I noticed that. Mm -hmm. weird feedback but I noticed that so do you think yeah. that you people will be able to tell so there's four books in the series is that what I'm hearing um yeah well there's there's four books in the series as a whole and then there's like kind of a sequel fifth book that um kind of draws out some of the themes just draw, seated here and there in the series do you think people will be able to see your progression as a writer throughout the books then they might. Um, I can definitely trace um, maturity in style from the journey to the village. And um, the claw, the claw is interesting because it takes place in an entirely, uh, the claws book three, it will take place in an entirely different setting from the village and with an entirely different character as the main point of view character. So um, he has a slightly bit different narration style from a lot of the other characters. Was that fun? So tonight? that, yeah, it'll be fun. And I think that might alter the, um, that will alter the style slightly. Um, but it's also just maturity of style continuing to grow. What is your favorite book then? <laughs> of your books. You can't your pick books. favorites, but. They're like your babies. Can't pick one. Yeah. Oh, you, you, oh, wait, you mean of my books? Of the books that you've written, yes. Of the books I've written, okay. So, yeah, I say I don't have favorites, but The Claw is my favorite. It's your favorite. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't, yeah. For this one, it's not published yet. It will be published with Ambassador International. We don't have dates on that yet, so that's why it's not listed. For <laughs> those of you, like, wondering what this girl's talking about, follow us. Yeah. We'll get these books. Um, what is your favorite scene? in any of the books without significant spoilers. Mm -hmm. um, so I was actually, I was planning to pick one of these out beforehand and I forgot about that. So uh, I'm just gonna have to try to pull one. I really love, there's, there's a scene where the thorns in the journey find an abandoned child um, and they take her on to travel with her and um, as they're, and she's like, she's very unresponsive and doesn't really seem to understand a lot of basic concepts, um, signs of like neglect and abuse. And so she, as they're traveling with her, um, one day she puts her hand in Fred's and he's just so overwhelmed by that gesture of trust and um, tenderness. And he feels this overwhelming love and desire to protect her. And that was, I think, one of my favorite scenes in that book. Oh, I love that. I love that. I, I want to read that now. Um, <laughs> do you have plans for like a different series once this, once this one is all wrapped up? Um, well, most of what I continue to write in the future will probably be in the set in the same universe because I have so many stories with so many characters planned. Um, I don't have any series specifically planned. There's the main Kariston series and then the sequel to it, which is a pretty going to be a pretty hefty um, volume itself. And I, I might I might have to split it up into multiple books. We'll see how long it gets. <laughs> um, what's that? Are people surprised when you tell them that you're a published author? Um, that's that's an interesting question. I don't know if um, I mean some of my up. a lot of my um, a lot of my friends and family were uh, happy and impressed when I told them about it. Um, I guess, I guess, um, if I think about the strangers I've talked to, so they do, they do show pretty, um, 
surprise done sometimes. <laughs> it's interesting because I, I know, especially in the homeschool community, you end up with these like 20 year olds like you are yeah. who have college degrees and books that are published and have done pretty notable things. And people just stare at them sometimes and go like, what, mm -hmm. how, why? <laughs> but yeah. Um, it's been a little while since I talked to um, people about my books. Like I was doing more of it in 2019, right before the journey was coming out. And so, yeah, I haven't, I haven't gone, I haven't um, been, uh, I, oh, what's the word? Oh, I haven't been moving in a lot of circles outside my typical ones lately. So everybody kind of already knows at this point. Yeah, it's standard, standard problem for the last yeah. year. Um, <laughs> that makes it. So, aside from reading good books, what are some tips or advice or anecdotes you would have for young writers? Um, so, what I like to tell um, beginners, writer, beginning writers, um, younger writers is, um, first of all, your story is valuable. Your story is needed by someone out there. You have words that only you can tell in that specific way. I mean, there are there, the stories are the same the world over. They have the beginning, the middle, and end. Some of them, anyway. <laughs> uh, but but only only you can tell your words in your own unique way. That um, is such good advice because I think sometimes we just see that there's so many books mm -hmm. and so much written content yeah. in the world, and you feel like I can't add to it. Yeah, but like you say, only you can tell your story in your way yeah. yeah that's that's a gem i think you need to frame that and put that on an etsy sign i like that <laughs> well okay uh, let's see i had a, i had a second thought as well um uh, that is uh don't seek out criticism too early in your writing journey um mm -hmm. because i feel like i personally i didn't get i didn't get a lot of criticism when i was just starting to write i was writing for fun and I was just spitballing a six, seven, eight-year-old writing horrible prose with um, very little characterization in anything. Of a and seven -year -old, it didn't yes. matter. <laughs> I was enjoying myself and I was honing my skills by simply reading and writing and right. reading and writing and not not worrying about what anybody really um, what anybody was really going to say about it. I really, um, and so when you like after you've matured your own style some and you know what you're looking for in your own writing, then you can hand it off to someone else and say, would you please look at this and tell me what you think could be improved. But you risk, I think, um, you risk, I think, just becoming something more, uh, more rigid and rule bound if you don't let yourself find your own style first. That is such good advice, and it's funny because you said six, seven, eight, and I have a seven-year-old, and he <laughs> writes all the time, stories all the time, and I mm -hmm. was going with him on a school assignment. Um, he goes to school, but right now we're homeschooling because of the world, and he was supposed to edit it, and he didn't want to edit it because he was like, Mommy, it's great as it is, <laughs> and I was just like, well, we just need to put a capital letter here, like the important basic bits, but I've always felt that. I don't want to clinch yeah. his writing spirit. My writing spirit yeah. wasn't clenched when I was young. And that is good to hear that you yeah. shouldn't quench their spirit when they're writing. There's plenty of time exactly. to get criticism in this world, yeah. especially. Mm -hmm. well, that is such a good, again, again, this is such valuable information. I love hearing that. Is there anything well, else? I'm happy. I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy to have made you happy with it. <laughs> I guess. Well, I think it's because so often we think of writers when I think of a writer, I guess I always think of male writers, like the, the pictures in Barnes and Noble and mm, like yeah. with a pipe <laughs> and they're like 45 <laughs> and they're writing, even though that's silly. I don't know why I have this image in my head. And then it's so encouraging to see people who I guess grew up writing basically. Mm -hmm. Like they grew up with yeah. their books. They grew up writing. They yeah. focused on that. They threw their passions into it and they matured as they wrote because I feel like as humans and as Christians even, we're like, I shouldn't do something and put it out to the world until it's the very, very best. But sometimes mm -hmm. it's working hard and being industrious 
and doing it all to the glory of God. Yeah. Which is what you're doing yep. in your writing. Um, what do your parents think? How proud are they of you? <laughs> um, I think they're, I think they're quite proud of me. Um, I am so happy that I had them to like read to me when I was younger. And um, they always, they always believed that I could go and, anywhere I had a mind to and they encouraged me to pursue my talent and I'm so thankful to them for that. Yes. I I was going to say I think that having parents who provided you those books and encouraged you is a huge part of this story too. Uh, and I as a parent always have to throw in that angle. <laughs> do your do your siblings read your books for fun or do they just know the stories already? Um, well, my one sister who I kind of created the original um, base stories with, she definitely um, has read them in many of their forms. And um, I think uh, a lot of my other siblings have read um, one or both of the books by this point. My 10-year-old sister has really um, enjoyed them. She thought that the village was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> which I was kind of amused about because not a lot of other people, I think, have laughed so hard reading it. But I know I would have laughed at it when I was her age. So I was happy to discover that um, she could enjoy it that way. I, that makes me that makes me smile. I don't know why. That just makes me smile. I love that. Uh, what is... I think it's the... Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, go for it. Okay. Um, the, I think it's the interpersonal conflict. Sometimes um, it affects you more, it like affects you more emotionally when you're older and have the uh, the developed empathy. But when you're younger, you just enjoy seeing the people bounce off each other and it cracks you up, you know? I love that. That just, I don't know, that amuses me. What is the ideal age to read your first two books for the first time, would you think? Oh, that's a good question. I have not thought about that one before. Oh, um, uh, I do think that, um, if uh if a kid's at the reading level like um if a kid's homeschooled often they'll be at a higher reading level than um a kid in a public school setting um and that and then you could like just hand it to them at 10 like my 10 year old sister she really enjoyed it um not all kids are at that reading level and that's okay i think um uh, I think some older ladies have really enjoyed it, like um, mom figures, grandma figures, they really enjoy it, and then passing it on to whatever kids um, the reading level is at. Uh, I think um, somebody said it was a good 12 and up reading level. Okay. That's what I was thinking. I thought it sounded like junior high, early high school, yeah. and then you can have wiggle room either, yeah. either side from yeah. that. Because I, I think I mentioned that I wanted to get it for my niece, and she, I think she's 14. So yeah. maybe she's 13. But <laughs> that that makes sense, um, and that makes me smile because again, the sunlight influence coming in here with the reading levels. That's so exciting. That's a great recommendation for sunlight. Have you ever talked to them about carrying your books? Um, I let me see. I think I contacted them really early on before the journey was actually published. Um, and I didn't like, I didn't get a really, I got just kind of got, got a kind of non-committal answer on that. So I might contact them again in the future, but I haven't thought about them for a while. Well, so. <laughs> Ambassador yeah. is launching, trying to launch, um, like, a working with Sunlight to get them to carry some of our books. Oh, really? So cool. I will definitely remind them. I'll probably send in your books and some pitches that hey. you use Sunlight throughout the curriculum because that is the, probably the greatest um review of the sunlight curriculum is like hey look we have a published author <laughs> at this age um this is yeah. not supposed to be a sunlight ad but i just love their books i love how they <laughs> create readers and yep. writers and continuous thinkers so i'm sure everyone's going why is she talking about sunlight so much <laughs> but <that> good? <laughs> it's really good hey there you go it's, if it's really good if it works to create strong minds i love it um, Verity, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for writing these books. Um, it has been a pleasure talking to you. Again, if you guys missed the first part, my name is Susanna Maurer, and I am here with Verity Buchanan. Um, and this is episode two of our Ambassador International Author Interview podcast. It's not a podcast because it's on Facebook Live. Um, if you like this, please like it, leave a comment, and share it. Alrighty, guys. You guys have a great night. I'm going to figure out if I can end this video. I can.